Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. I'm going to be late for work. Um, I didn't really have anything to steal, so it's not that big of a deal, but I will have to get the window fixed. So, not that great. <laughs> It's a story we first broke early this morning when Fargo police told us at least eight cars were broken into in the 3300 block of 16th Avenue South. A witness gave police a description of the vehicle and the suspects around two this morning. And when police later stopped that car, they found multiple stolen items inside. They arrested Chancellor Lewis and Hannah Dahl of Dilworth for unlawful entry into vehicles. Police also arrested a 16-year-old boy, but he was later released to his parents. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley talked with a victim this morning who didn't just have her car broken into, but stolen altogether. It's really sad because you go to work and you try really hard to provide for your family and own a car and have a place to live and then for someone just to take that away it's not okay she thought her morning was starting out with a prank from her boyfriend when he asked her for the garage door opener so he could start her car when i said no it's parked outside i thought he was like playing a game like he put my car inside last night and came downstairs and it was gone but after talking with a neighbor who came out to her car window shattered Brittany knew it was more than just a joke they were obviously digging pretty hard and then that's what I'm guessing. They must have found a key or something and took off. At least eight other cars from her apartment complex looked something like this early this morning. But Brittany's car is the only one that was stolen. Another girl told me that her keys were in it. They didn't take hers, so I don't know why. Like my boyfriend's car wasn't touched, so I guess they just went around picking and choosing which cars they wanted to go into and what to do with them. She says she only had some ice skates in her son's car seat inside, but is now anxiously playing the waiting game. Hopefully they'll just leave it in a parking lot somewhere and I can just get it back that way. Otherwise, figure out what to do, ways to get to work, bring my son to daycare. In Fargo. I mean, it's just not fair. Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. Britney's car is a 2013 Hyundai Sonata. It's not completely clear whether more than eight cars were broken into. If you were a victim in this, police want you to report it by calling dispatch. That phone number is 451-7660. Authorities are investigating bomb threats that are being made through email today, both nationwide and locally. Two bomb threats came into Williston earlier today. The Williston Police Department says the first threat was received by electronic communication around 1245 this afternoon. Police searched the area of 3rd Avenue West and 14th Street West but couldn't find anything. A similar threat was made near 1st Avenue East and 4th Street East. Police didn't find anything with that threat either. But in both cases, the threats shut down streets and forced people to evacuate homes and businesses. The Williston Police Department says similar threats have been reported throughout North Dakota and the nation, but all appear to be hoaxes. We could get used to this. Sunshine, melting, temps in the 30s. Hutch, I heard you say it earlier, super duper. <laughs> I say that all the time. <laughs> it's, a, it's a highly technical meteorological term, and we definitely did have some super duper weather today, particularly in our western and southern counties, where a lot of near 40 degree readings were sought this afternoon. We have mid 30s through Lakes Country, and even some melting going on in northern Minnesota along the Highway 2 corridor. Halock, your high today, 30 degrees. We're cooling off fairly quickly thanks to clear skies. 20, your current temperature in Thief River Falls, still mid 30s to the south and to the west of Fargo. A lot of clear skies in our area, a few clouds out to the west, but tonight there's no winter weather advisories to tell you about. Temperatures will slowly fall through the 20s, uh, excuse me, 30s and into the 20s. But thanks to that breeze that we have outdoors, we won't fall too quickly. It looks like fairly stable temperatures in Grand Forks this mm -hmm. evening. And finally, some quiet weather. I do want to caution everyone out there, Andrea, though, mm -hmm. as the temperature does dip down below freezing tonight, wet roads, particularly those side streets and sidewalks, could become slippery once again. So yeah. take it slow. That's always the danger, right? You bet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Take a look at this. A family in Moorhead caught a Porsche pirate taking their packages from their front steps. Now they're warning their neighbors to be careful because the Porsche pirate are still on the loose. Every year we are always seeing uh, this type of crime become more popular. Uh, people need to realize when they are receiving packages, they need to take steps to protect themselves. But we want the Moorhead Police Department says people should take precautions and have a second drop-off location if you're not going to be home when your packages are delivered.
Scammers are at it again, this time pretending to be from the Social Security Administration, saying they need your Social Security number to make sure it isn't blocked. The scammers will say your number has been tied to a crime and that it's now blocked by the government. They will ask for your number and your cash. But the Social Security Administration says it will never call and ask for your number. If you're worried about your Social Security information, whether or not it's been stolen, find the real number on your own and call it. Protesters made their voices heard in St. Paul this morning as the Minnesota Public Utilities Commission voted to move forward with a route for the Enbridge pipeline. Among the items on the agenda, a petition by a group called Friends of the Headwaters asking to reconsider the route approved for the new pipeline. Commissioners voted to deny that request, which would run across much of northern Minnesota. But as soon as they did, some of the protesters there spoke up and chanted their disapproval. North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum wants to exempt military pay and pensions from income taxes, hoping that keeping veterans in the state could help the state fill thousands of open jobs. Lawmakers have ignored similar pleas in the past, but supporters say the economic benefits of keeping veterans in the state would more than make up for lost revenue. North Dakota has more than 13,000 unfilled advertised jobs, though Burgum believes the number of all open jobs is at least twice that. Military members generally may retire after 20 years, leaving many of them in their late 30s or early 40s in search of a new career. The Minnesota Health Department has secured more than $20 million in funding to use on preventing heart disease, diabetes, and stroke over the next five years. The funding came from the CDC, and it's to build on existing health efforts. The state will receive about $4 million per year to work with partners in the community and health care to help those who lack access to care or are at a higher risk, including those in greater Minnesota, people of color, and low-income Minnesotans. A popular holiday train is making its 20th annual journey through the U.S., and it made a stop in Detroit Lakes today. Plenty of people came out to see the Canadian Pacific holiday train early this afternoon. The crew on board gave a free concert, and those attending brought either a food or monetary donation to benefit their local food shelter. The holiday train will be making stops in North Dakota, too, including Enderlin tomorrow and then Carrington and Harvey on December 15th before wrapping up the trip in Saskatchewan on December 16th. The sights, sounds, and aroma of the season are alive in homes and schools across the country this week. And at Eagles Elementary in South Fargo, a fun learning time for not only the children, but adults too. Kindergarten teacher Heidi Moline is using STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, to do some remodeling of sorts on another staple of the holidays, gingerbread houses. The session began with sharing the story of the gingerbread man, but the real emphasis, hands-on decorating of these rich brown cottages. And for the kids and moms and dads alike, it's a big deal. Every year the kids look forward to and get super excited to do this, this special day and it gives parents and grandparents and guests or whoever they have with them to come to school and just have that good quality time together. And so you know, the tradition of gingerbread houses during the Christmas holiday began in Germany in the 16th century, and it was brought to this country by early German settlers. Don't forget to watch as the Bison and SDSU fight it out Friday in Fargo. Be sure to tune in at 6 p.m. on KX4 for our Farmers Union Insurance Bison football pregame show prior to Friday night's game, which kicks off at 7 p.m. and can be seen on ESPN2. Speaking of the Bison, former NDSU quarterback Carson Wentz is out with an injury from the Philadelphia Eagles, a fractured vertebrae, according to ESPN. Officials say it allow, if allowed time to rest, he will make a full recovery. Team officials say they will continue to evaluate his back to determine whether continuing to play this season would worsen the injury. Just in time for the holidays.